Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Carla Boyce, and I'm the new uh, agenda charter uh, chairperson. And so I just want to welcome you to uh, January 23rd, 2012, meeting of the agenda charter committee. Um, we'll come to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Chairwoman Boyce. Here. Mr. Esposito. Here. Mr. Howland. Here. Ms. Cayley. Here. Mr. McCann. Here. Is there anybody signed up for the public forum? There is not. Okay. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak to the... Please come forward and state your name. Uh, my name is Thomas Gregory, and I just want to bring a point up. With the last legislative session that we had, seeing this is agenda charter, as we notice in the past, we're getting a lot more vo vocalness from the gallery. One of the things I think that's really important is that there's an appropriate way of addressing the legislature, petitioning of one's cause, and addressing, I mean, real issues. And I think what happens when we look at the, uh, the rules of the legislature as well as our county charter, and we see that the president of the legislature has one major responsibility amongst many others actually, and that is to keep and maintain the decorum of this particular body. Therefore, I'd like just to say that I think it'd be worthwhile for the legislature uh, itself, this body itself, or this committee itself, to address at some point some kind of language, not for enforcement, obviously we don't wanna crush democracy, but in other words, a, a, a word from the legislative body itself that it would be appreciative of the fact that the decorum of this chamber remain sacrosanct with what the purpose of this legislature is, and that's to make rules and govern. Obviously, if it was a bipartisan co suggestion, you would reach to both sides you know, of the uh, Republicans as well as Democrats. I mean, I think what I'm trying to say is maybe it's time for this legislative body to give more support your president on this particular question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else who comes for the public forum? If not, we'll call the public forum closed. First item on the agenda, Madam Clerk. Yeah, we have to vote now. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm jumping the gun. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you put a vote down? <laughs> the next item on the agenda is approval of minutes. You have the no November 28, 2011 minutes before you. They will stand approved unless the clerk is notified of any changes by the end of the day. Now we'll go to new business. The next item on the agenda is new business. Madam Clerk, will you please read the member and total referral followed by Brian. Referral 12-02, amending Article 2, Section 545-9 of the Rules of the Monroe County Legislature. No, no, that's okay. You're sitting in Mr. O'Brien's seat. I, I, yeah. You don't look like it. No, I don't, but, you know. It's a good thing. That's a good thing. You got the name right, so that's all that matters. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, first of all, I'd like to start off by saying welcome, and uh, glad to see you in the chairman's position here. Um, I'd also say like, welcome and nice to work with everyone in 2012. I'm back on this committee. I did a short stint here in my first year in 2008 and um, eager to work with everyone in 2012. That said, I'd also like to um, thank the administration for allowing this issue to be brought before committee for um, constructive discussion before we uh, continue down the road. And in that, I'm, I'm going to yield to um, legislator Esposito. He has a number of questions I believe that he'd like to address. Mr. Esposito, I'll recognize you at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to welcome you as well. I don't think we can uh, call you a freshman when you make mistakes like that. <laughs> Only um, when I make mistakes. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I, too, would like to uh, thank the uh, President for bringing this referral to committee. This had come up as a matter of urgency a couple weeks ago uh, before full legislature, and we expressed that there should be some conversation about changing the rules in this matter. Um, and so I'd like to ask through you to the maker of the referral, President Adair, just for a brief explanation as to what this referral intends to uh, accomplish. I recognize President Adair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and thank you, Legislator Esposito, um, 
for letting me go through this. It, um, quite simply, we just came through our redistricting process, and when we did that, um, this honorable body elected to put in place, as we always do during, during the redistricting, is the, uh, the terms of our, of our, uh, our seats. When we did that, um, we, did, we did a 4-4-2. Four, four, now, what, the thing I'd like to say is that when, when that happened, we've normally had two-year cycles because we've had people coming in and out every two years. So I went back and I looked at the historical, um, and I went back to actually 1993 when uh, President Eckert at the time um, did the same thing. This referral came down to this, is that when we went through the redistricting and everyone had four-year terms, we, we made the cycle of four years. So simply at that point was a housekeeping matter. And what, it's, what that does for us is it also keeps our legislative uh, session on the same terms as our election t cycle. So it, it provides us that continuity that we need to have for, for this uh, particular session. And I think that one of the things I'd, I'd like to say is that um, by doing this at this point, um, we're just going to be able to, it's going to give us a little bit more t uh, flexibility in, in how we present things, how we do things within the legislative chambers, how we do things that are going to be structured for us going through the future. So I'm, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of excited that we're doing this. Um, I think it's the right thing. Historically, it looks as though that's what we've done. So that is why I've submitted this, and that's why I wanted to bring it to the agenda charge tonight to discuss it. Any other questions, Mr. Esposito? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, through you to the maker, is, is there any ways in which you can explain further as to how this will increase our flexibility? Um, and the reason I ask is because I'm concerned about the exact opposite of happening. Um, if we change our legislative cycle from a two-year to a four-year, it seems like it has a, a limiting effect on the work that this body can do over the aggregate four years of, uh, of the terms that we've all been elected to. Thank you. Through you, Madam Chair, um, I, Legislator Esposito's point's well taken. However, I'm, I guess at this point, I kind of disagree with it, saying that whenever you've got a position of having four, a four-year term or a four-year cycle at this point, I think it's going to uh, add a little bit of not historical knowledge to us. It's going to be able for us to take a look at things and, and not try to rush things through. It's not going to put us into that cycle that we always kind of get into in the, the end of one where we, every, we've got people up for election and we start to uh, position ourselves with things that really can be distractive to the to the legislative body. May I continue, yes, Madam Mr. Chairman? Esposito. Uh, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> through you, Madam Chairman, again, Chairwoman, to, uh, to the President. Mm -hmm. With this change, is this anything that anyone said was a requirement that because we are elected to four-year terms that there must be a corresponding four-year legislative cycle? Through you, Madam Chair, no, there isn't. Um, but you know, again, I, what I wanted to do was go back and look at historically what this body, this honorable body, has done, and, and that's what we did. Thank you. And uh, through you, Madam Chairman, if I may continue, um, having sort of the practical consequences or impact of a four-year cycle, um, what would they be? <clears throat> would there, for example, then? because we're now in a continuous four-year session, not be the opportunity to bring up um, legislation that's substantially the same as anything that's been introduced at all in that four-year cycle? Is that one of the things that uh, would carry a, as a consequence of having a four-year cycle? Through you, Madam Chair, um, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting question because I guess one of the, the, the drawbacks to it could have been is, boy, could we introduce something this January and find out that th 36 months from now, this thing should be relevant again. Right. I will, I will say this. There's no yes or no answer to that question. Um, I have, you know, as a legislator, every one of us have, there are different rules within, this, within the body here, what we can use within the chambers as far as, you know, suspending the rules, considers to remotion. We can do, there's a lot of things that we can say. I, I personally can say this. You know, in my, in my tenure as president, um, we, I look at things, a little bit differently, I think, I hope so, that um, when a referral is submitted to me, I look at it, first off, one of the things is the legality of it. Second off is that the financial impact statement is there and, it, and it's correct. 
And thirdly, I want to make sure that there isn't something similar on the books already and that we're not overstepping our bounds with the state or federal government when they have passed things. Um, and I've had all those in, in two years. I've had every single one of those things come before me. I've also tried to make it a, a, at a point that when a legislator comes to me with something and, it, and it's been rejected, obviously we get the same, you get the next day you get the, the form letter that says it's been rejected and all that. But, but the legislators that I think have really tried, have, have had a passion for whatever their whatever their referral was, have come back to me and have asked me that second question is, what is it exactly is wrong? And I think one of the things I've tried to do, and it's on both sides of the aisle, and I, and I hope that, that people can feel that, feel that same way, is that if there's something wrong with it, that it's just a technical error, I've gone to that legislator and I've asked, I've told them there's technical errors. And I think we've had circumstances within the last two years where that's happened. And I think as when that has happened and the correction's been made, I've submitted into the committee cycle. Thank Any you very much. further discussion? Thank you very much, Mr. President, Madam Chair, if I may continue. Yes. Um, I appreciate that sentiment. I, I, uh, I hope that that continues to carry the day in terms of uh, handling referrals that get introduced. Uh, I am concerned, um, as I have been since I elected this body, about the impact of the substantially the same as rule. I would certainly hope that uh, the President or the majority of this body, if, uh, if we ever deem the need to bring something back because it's of, of import that's been considered before, uh, sort of as you said, that we continue to do that. But I have trouble believing that as an independently elected uh, official, I'm not able to do that on my own, uh, at least more than one time, even if it's not an unlimited. So, so that's something that I, I have concern about further limiting that effect. I didn't like it under the two-year cycle. I like it less under the four-year cycle. Um, and so that's, that's one problem I have with this. Uh, I guess the other question I have just to confirm is by virtue of doing a four-year cycle, um, there will be no organizational meeting of this body in January of 2014. Is that something that the chair or the president could confirm? Through you, Madam Chair, that would be correct. Thank you. Um, well, I understand why we're doing this. Um, I, I disagree with it. I voted against uh, the, the amendment uh, of expanding the terms all to four years, and this was one of those reasons. Uh, therefore, I don't think we should continue to do it. Um, I guess there is one other point I meant to ask. I apologize before I sum up, Mr. Chair, if I may continue. You may. Um, you mentioned precedent from 1993. If I recall, in 2002, after the reapportionment in 2001, every, uh, term, every term for every office in the legislature was also a four-year term, but there was no subsequent um, change in the rules like we see before us today. It, do you, through you, uh, Madam Chair, to the President, have an explanation for the inconsistency between what we're doing now and the last two reapportionments? Through you, Madam Chair, I do not have an answer of why that decision was made at that time. I just know at this time that I made the decision based on the 1993, which to me made it as much made the most sense to me, and and that's why I brought this before this honorable body. Okay. Um, thank you. I'll, I'll certainly look into the why what we did in the 01 to 05 time frame between now and, and full legislature. But without belaboring the point anymore, I'd just like to say I'll be voting against this referral and encourage my colleagues to do the same. Thank you, Mr. Esposito. Would anybody like to else would like to address? Okay. If not, then we'll call the vote. Madam Clerk, roll call vote. Okay. Roll sure. call vote, please. Sure. Okay. Chairwoman Boyce. Uh, yes. Mr. Esposito? No. Mr. Howland? Aye. Ms. Cayley? No. Mr. McCann? No. Three to two. Passes. All right. That's referral 12-006. Uh, Move, Madam Chair. A second. Any discussion on the matter? Mr. Esposito? Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I'm the, uh, the sponsor of this referral, which would, uh, in its simplest terms, provide a property tax exemption to residential homeowners and property taxpayers who improve their home through capital nature. Um, this is a provision that exists in state law that allows municipalities like counties to opt in and allow for a phased-in tax abatement for people that make such improvements. Um, it's something that I believe is a good idea for several very simple reasons. Uh, most notably, it'll encourage people to improve their homes. And while doing that, 
It uh, helps them improve their home values, which is a positive. It helps put people to work in the home construction industry, which is a positive, uh, and provides them with a little bit of property tax relief while they do it. Um, furthermore, if done successfully, this program could actually improve and increase revenues to the county and, and aid in a, a fiscal situation that we're facing. For all those reasons, I think this is a very good idea. It was um, brought forth in the previous legislative cycle by uh, Legislator Dick Beebe uh, just a couple months ago, uh, and, and Madam Chair, your predecessor had uh, decided it was th the right thing to do to refer this referral to administration for further study um, so that we could analyze it as best we can to, to know what the impact of a property tax exemption of this nature would be on residents, homeowners, taxpayers, as well as the county's financial situation. Um, unfortunately, the timing of that was such that it was only referred to the administration for a very short period of time, and as Mr. Helfer alluded at our last agenda charter meeting last month, that there simply wasn't time to report back to this committee. Um, and so the year ended, the cycle ended, and therefore we had to do this again. So I'm putting forward this referral today in hopes that we could send it back to the administration um, so that this issue can be studied and we could have more conversations about it. Having said that, I, I want to apologize. Um, the timing of the new cycle has worked out awkwardly. Um, I put this in a couple weeks ago with the hopes that we could have, as this committee, uh, real discussions um, in advance of today about whether or not this is something we can work on going forward. Uh, and in light of some of my concerns that we discussed in the last referral, about legislation that comes up not being able to come back up again um, because of the same as provision and the fact that we're facing a four-year cycle. I want to remove this uh, referral from consideration today. I'm going to move to withdraw it, um, which is a courtesy I hope you'll extend me, and so that we can continue to discuss it after the fact, uh, after this meeting, and, and well, we've had more than just four days of, of, of the committees having been assigned and having a new chair for this committee. So I hope, uh, Madam Chair, you'll take me up on that opportunity to discuss this further going forward. Um, and uh, for that, I'd like to move to withdraw this referral today. Would anybody else like to address the referral at this time, or do we want to give consideration to Mr. Esposito's re re um, request to, at this time? Anybody else like to address this at this time, or would you like make make? Should I make a ruling on this at this? I can, I can, I can make the ruling. Okay, then at this time, then I'd like to um, honor your I don't request think so. yeah. and. Um, you may at this time um, remove this motion from the agenda at this time. All right, next referral is referral 12-0050, designation of official news newspapers. Moved. Moved by Mr. Holland, second by Mr. McCann. Any discussion on this? Yes, um, Ms. Cayley? Sure, Mr. Thank Esposito. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, in the past, I think we do this every couple of years, um, the administration has provided a cost breakdown of what the expense would be to county taxpayers to enter into uh, various publications as being the official newspaper. I'd like to request through you, Madam Chair, to the administration that we get that uh, sometime in the near future before this goes ideally to the Ways and Means Committee on Wednesday, if at all possible. Do we have that information, Mr. Halper, or would you, would you prefer to... To look cool I'd be glad to provide that uh, before the Ways and Means Committee. Thank you very much. And through you, Madam Chair, uh, one other point of clarification I'd like to ask from the administration before Ways and Means. In past, and I, I don't remember exactly, but I remember having a debate about this a couple years ago at this committee, or maybe it was a different one. And one of the restrictions um, cited for using an official publication such as a uh, city newspaper uh, was something to do with paid subscriptions. Um, and through you, Madam Chair, I'd like to request the administration either to clarify what that restriction would be tonight or, again, provide that in writing before Ways and Means as well. Uh, Madam Chair, we can provide both of those requests um, prior to the Ways and Means Committee. We'll put something together in writing and get it to the committee members. That'd be okay. helpful. Thank you very Thank much. You. Anything further, Ms. Kelly? No, Are you all set? Mr. McCann. Madam Chair, maybe I'm mistaken here, but looking at the referral, it doesn't look like it goes the ways and means, right? Yeah, okay. For that information before full legislature. That would be fine. We'd be glad to. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for clarifi clarification, Mr. McCann. Anything further on this? If not, 
call uh, vote on this. All in favor? Opposed? Referral 12-52, 2012 Annual Work Program for the Monroe County Legislature. Second. Moved by Mr. McCann, second by Mr. Howland. Any discussion on the matter? I recognize uh, President Adair. Madam Chair, I just have to sign my name because I'm with the new uh, committee. You may. <laughs> Would you like help to the podium, sir? <laughs> told before I came here tonight that I had to put my notes into a bigger font because I'm really trying not to use my glasses. When I first started out, we had the, we had the 16th fonts. Now I'm probably up to 24. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Chairman, or Chairwoman Boyce, and, and thank you for letting me um, address the committee tonight about the uh, legislative work program for 2012. One of the things I think I'm most uh, happy with is you know, we made some we made some decisions last year. I made some decisions last year to change this format around uh, to make it a little bit more workable. I think that um, I'm pleased to say that that will be that way tonight. I'm hoping that this is something that we can all um, agree that we need to do some work on, and that I'm very also very proud to say that this is the first uh, this is the earliest a work plan's ever been submitted. So, um, as County Charter State states, um, it is my duty as president to enter in a work plan. Um, in that, in the charter, it says to act with the agenda charter committee. Um, historically, in the number of years, and this is supposed to be submitted every time, we've only done this 12 times. This is being the 12th time we've submitted it. So we've really had, a, as I said, I think last year at this time, we really have a spotty record of, of getting this in and submitting it. Um, historically, this document has always been something that can be contentious, can be something that we squabble over and all that. And I, it, my intent tonight really is to lay out wh what my thought process on it was, where I'd like to see it go from this at this point, and share with you my ideas for, the, for what I call the, the pillars of, of this. Um, first and foremost, we need to move the process forward. I, I, think that's, I think that's key. I think we've got to not be in a position where this is just going to stall out and, and become a, a piece of paper that we spent some time on, I spent some time on, and we don't use it. Um, I want to have an open discussion about this uh, work plan. I want to eliminate this as a source of contention. I want this to be what it's called, a work plan. Um, I want to make sure that we don't see delays in it, we don't stall it out. Um, and I know sometimes because we have you know, we have two different sides of the aisle here that things can happen like that. But I think as long as we continue to keep working, I think it, it will be for the betterment of this legislative body. The approach I took on this is one that I think is familiar for myself and I think it's familiar for a lot of people that are, are here in the chambers tonight. And I took a, a direct board of, board of directors approach to this. And thinking about us for a second that the shareholders of this company are the taxpayers of County of Monroe what is the best way a board of directors can take this and, and effectively provide the services and have a vision for what we should be doing up here, for what we should be doing up here on the fourth floor? Now, that said, board of, uh, board of directors do not run the micromanaging of the business. They do not sit down and, and, and run the day-to-day -day operation. That's what CEOs are for. That's what the people are that are in charge of, of doing the day-to-day uh, -day business. Our document, I want it to be a statement of our values and the direction of which we, which we are uh, supposed to be sending this, this agenda or this, this work plan and us into. So with that said, I don't think that this should be something that we, it's, it should not be something that we don't have specifics in as far as our values or directions and, and, and being, uh, being a, a, a clear direction of what we want to do over the next year or the next two years or the next four years. I think it should be something that it's not rigid. It shouldn't be in stone. It should be something that's a working tool that it, at times, as legislator Esposito tonight said, and one of his uh, concerns about having a four-year cycle is there's, things are going to change. 
and we, we need to recognize that. Um, I put the document together, and I think everyone has the document today. It came in as a matter of importance. And, and the first one um, pretty much is about jobs. And if you look at what I presented to you, if you look at what I presented to you, jobs, I think, is the number one uh, priority or pillar of this thing. We just got a report recently, I think in the last week or so, from the Department of Labor, citing that, I think it was the State Department of Labor, uh, citing that Ro the Rochester region was number one in job growth. That's really good. And I'm glad to hear that. But one of the things I've always said is, as president here, or as a, as a county legislator, we should be accenting the positives of what we're doing. I think it's great to get press like that. I think it's shown that we're moving in the right direction, but we can't get off of that right now. We gotta continue that, and I think all 29 of us would agree that jobs for this community, it's gonna be one of our things to, I think, to create, it, create an atmosphere which allows both our public and our not-for-profit sectors to work together to achieve real got jobs. The point that I put in there tonight was, you know, what, how do we have a partnership with RGA? How do we have a, a, a partnership with RBA? How do we have a partnership with Unicon? How do we do that? One of the first and foremost things is, you know, we need to, as a legislative body, understand what they're trying to do, and we have, they have to understand what we're trying to do. And I think specifically when it comes to jobs and all that, I think we should all be keenly aware of what everybody wants to accomplish here. So that's, to me, on the jobs point, that's the, that's the most important part of it. And I think one of the things that we can do is, is help us with that. The second bullet is spending reduction. And one of the things I see every month in this body is we have memorializing resolutions, which have given us the ability, gives us the ability to say something to somebody in a different office. Now, what do we do with the memorialized resolutions? Do they really send the strong message that we should as, as a legislative body um, to our, our state people, our federal people? Does this, do they send the right message that we in, in Monroe County need to be heard and we in Monroe County need to, to act upon things? I, I want to make sure that we use our memorializing resolutions. I want us to, to look at that stuff as, as making sure that we have the influence on people, whether they're in Washington, whether they're in Albany, that we as a, as a group have a united front, that we take a stand against, especially against unfunded and underfunded mandates from the state and the federal government. The third one that I have on here is property tax stability. And this is about innovation in the city and the country that's produced or hosts most of the creative and innovative thinkers in this country's history, from George Eastman to Frederick Douglass. Our citizens have been more innovative and have changed the course of history. And I think that's nothing's truer to be said about, you know, some of the things that come out of our area, out of our region is just, it's, it's remarkable. Sometimes I think we, we dwell on the things that, you know, that, that are negative and, and we shouldn't. We should be dwelling on the positive stuff. This county government now continues to be innovative in keeping property taxes from becoming more of a stranglehold on t residents and taxpayers. And I think every single person in here understands that and knows that that's, that's part of our, our, uh, our mantra is going for our, uh, ours to go forward and say, you know what, we don't want taxes to go up on the people. We know they're overtaxed at this point. I think that's, that's squarely gonna be one of those things that we, we need to make sure that's in part of those pillars. The fourth one is just to promote ethical leadership within our community. And, and when I say that, you know, it's, it's personal ethics. Um, it's holding all of us accountable. I remember the first time that I got elected to a town board and I remember Herb Carlberg telling me that at that point, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I'm going to be a town board member. And he was probably right. And I look at that and when I see ethic leadership, I think it's within ourselves here as a group to do that and be honorable about it, to make sure that we're doing the right things both in this body and our personal decisions. So I would like to make sure that that is part of the pillar of our, of our work plan. For tonight's discussion and on this document, and, and I really hope that just using those four points tonight that I've communicated what my intent is and explain the matter of the process on which I use to, to come to this point, um, I want to say that 
I think this is something we need to, to work on. I think this is something that I'm presenting to you tonight. Um, it was presented as a matter of importance, quite frankly, because I didn't want to miss the first cycle of our committees. Um, with that said, um, Madam Chair, I would like to move that the work plan tonight be tabled till the next cycle. That would give everybody a chance to take a look at it, um, to give me some input. Uh, and when I say give me some input, knock on my door, people. Um, you know, not knocking on my door and talking to me about it means that we're really not interested in doing that. And I want to make sure everybody here is interested in doing that. If you want to work on it, I'm ready to work with it. Um, there's probably some things in here I don't ever consider anything that I do on my own or sometimes when help is always the best thing. I think there's some things in here probably we can still improve. I want to do that. So I'm, to, I'm asking tonight that we table this. I'm asking that it gives us 30 days for everyone to take a look at it. And with that, I think what I'd like to do is if there's any questions or anything anybody's got at this point, I'd like to open up the floor to that. Any questions, Mr. Esposito? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. President, for the presentation. Um, I'll certainly take you up on, on the opportunity to talk before next cycle, and I think that's a, a wise thing to Good. do so we can all discuss it. Um, one question I have, just so I can gauge the context here, is this still expected to be an annual work plan? I know last spring when this committee discussed this at first, it was there was a corresponding referral, I believe, to make it a once every two years. I just want to get a sense what your intention is. Yeah, we may, I, you know what, here's how I see it, um, Legislator Esposito. I see it as though, you know, if we want to look at this every year, we look at it. Uh, I, I don't, again, I don't want to make this something that we're set in stone in. I, it, I would be very, um, it would be very hurtful to me in the whole process if all of a sudden we submit this thing and we don't look at it again. That's not how a board of directors works. That's not how a company works. That's not the operation. As I said before, this is not tablets. This should be paper and it should be able to take an eraser every now and then and make adjustments to improve it for us in the community. Thank you. Ms. Kaling. Um, thank you, through the chair. Um, Mr. President, then will we be reviewing this at year end or to year end prior to the reintroduction of a new, of a new piece of work? Good question. What I'd like to do is I'm opening this up for 30 days and I would like some input, some honest input, folks. Honest input to what we really want to accomplish here. Once we get that, it's going to be, we're going to, there's going to be some, there's going to be some horse trading on it. I know that. There's going to be some wrangling because I'm not going to agree with every single person and they're not going to agree with everything I have to say. But if this truly is going to be a working document, then that's where we have to go. And in order for me to stand here and say that the next step is that we're going to look at this two years from now, I, again, what I'd say is I would be very remorse in saying here tonight, talking to you about this per thing, and say to you, well, I'm not, I'm not going to look at it for the next two years. So there's going to be other times when we're going to have to take a look at it, yes. Just for clarification through the chair, that's not exactly what I meant. I, I think what I meant is going forward, um, when you're introducing a new set of work program um, positions, Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that this doesn't become something where we have to reset every year. That's going to be my kind of my goal, is that this isn't going to be a reset thing every t one year. Okay, now here's another thing. We're going to look at our where we are. I'm hoping that we establish some solid pillars that continue, that are going to be able to work for us, and then we have to add or enhance, depending on what happens in the situations that are going on within the county government or out there in the, in the outside world at this point. So for me to stand here and say if we're going to be looking at it for two years from now or a year from now, I'm going to be looking at this all the time, and I'm actually going to call on my colleagues to help me out to do that. Thank you. That's what I meant. Okay. Any further discussion? Mr. McCann. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, through you to the President, I would just like to say I've been in this body for uh, a number of years now, and, and as you've mentioned, this is the earliest this work plan has ever been introduced and I would like to compliment you for the work that you've done on this to date and also uh, the, the, the tone which you set with that and, and the welcoming of people giving you input and uh, really creating a living document that we will look at regularly and update regularly. And with that I'd like to make a motion that we table uh, the, the work plan. Any further discussion before we move Sorry. to table? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to uh, second what uh, 
Legislator McCann was saying, and just uh, tell the president and I'm, I and I think all of us are looking forward to working with you on this. Great, thank you. I, if thank I you. could further uh, ask questions to President Adair. You may. Um, I was just curious, um, as to your last submitted uh, work plan to the county legislature, how would you say that this is, is um, changed or, or things that you've looked at as you've reflected in the past? The last, um, one, was, the last one was tabled. Um, it's, you know, it was a work in progress. Um, I think this one's a little bit better. I'm, ask, I'm asking for input into it. Okay. I think the last time I didn't ask for input into it, I think that was probably a, a mistake, but I think this time I'm asking for input into it. Okay. Are you, are you open to adding anything to the work plan? Other that, than was, that was my intent and purposes okay. of doing. I, I'm, I'm just yeah. saying of the basic, uh, you've got four, four well, points. Well, I'd like to think I'm perfect. Well, all men do things perfect, but that's okay. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, we got to keep it light in here. I know. But so you're willing to actually add yep. to the four points? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Any further discussion at this time? Hearing no, no other discussion at this time, then um, we'll move to table as requested, and um, we'll look forward to. Uh, the discussion in 30 days. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Oh yes, we must vote on that. I, pro I apologize. So at this time, can we can we what? We just moved to table it. Oh. I don't think we had to vote on the table on it. Okay. No. Yeah, I'm the chair. I'm, I'm rules are chair that we table. Okay. So at that time, at this time, we'll move to table it. And um, is there any other new business to come before this? Committee? Oh, I apologize. We do have to vote? Okay, clarification. We do have to vote. I apologize. All right, so all in favor? Okay. Opposed? Opposed? Any opposed? Okay. All right. So, let me go here. Is there any unfinished business? Is there any new business? Any other new business? Okay. If not, we'll call for an adjournment. There is no unfinished business. The January 23rd, 2012 meeting of the agenda charter stands adjourned, and the next meeting will be on February 27th, 2012. Thank you.